We've already discussed the Bullen versus Bonta decision by Judge Cormac Carney in the Southern District of California declaring that California's handgun roster is unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. This is indeed the right answer. But we talked about how arguably Judge Carney applied the wrong methodology and there's an easier way to find that the handgun roster is clearly unconstitutional under clear Supreme Court precedent, specifically Heller versus the District of Columbia from 2008. Let's break it down in some more detail. And let me explain how I think I might argue this if I were one of the lawyers in the case supporting the Second Amendment. Hey, folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar and New York Times bestselling author. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so and show your love for the Four Boxes of American Liberty. Okay, folks, so great news out of California a couple days ago where Judge Cormac Carney declared that California's handgun roster is unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. For those of you who are not familiar with this, California has a roster or a list of handguns that you are allowed to buy from retailers. And really that list has not been updated for, well, since at least 2013 or so, because in the last many years, California went out and basically added certain requirements that have to be on every single handgun added to the list. And one of those requirements is micro stamping that says that you fire a firearm and the casing associated with that bullet has to reflect the make, model, and serial number of the particular handgun that you fired. And if a handgun does not have that micro stamping capability, it cannot be added to the roster, which means the Californians have to basically buy from retailers only those guns on the roster, unless they're law enforcement. And as a practical matter, uh, those are older firearms and not the modern ones that have been made since 2013 with only a few exceptions to this. Now, Judge Carney rightly concluded that this violated the Second Amendment. However, as I talked about in my prior video, I think the methodology that he applied, while con conceptually correct, was unnecessary because, as I see it, the handgun roster issue of California is not a regulation on firearms. It's not a regulation on the carrying of firearms. It's not a regulation involving firearms. What it really is, if you look at it carefully and distinctly analytically, it is a ban on commonly possessed firearms in the United States, specifically firearms that have been made after 2013 at a minimum. These are commonly owned, commonly used firearms all across the United States, which is the proper standard. And because of that, California is not permitted to ban these in common use handguns that are in common use across the country. So I want to just sort of break this down a little bit more. I explained to you my theory in the prior video, but now I want to get a little more geeky and give you some specific factual information and legal information that I think might be helpful for understanding how this argument, I think, should be argued going forward as to why the California handgun roster is unconstitutional because it constitutes a firearms ban and thus violates the in common use test set forth by Heller to begin with. We know that the Heller case is still good law. That's the U.S. Supreme Court decision in 2008. In 2008, it was reaffirmed by Bruin. I'll give you the quotes in just one second. And specifically, we know from Heller that arms are defined as in the right to keep and bear arms as anything that can be used offensively or defensively. Certainly handguns are arms because the Heller court and the, and the McDonald court in 2010 specifically said that handguns are protected arms under the Second Amendment. And after the Supreme Court and Heller said that handguns are protected arms under the Second Amendment. It then went on to say, having conducted the text, history, and tradition analysis that is referred to as the Bruin analysis, but really it's the Heller analysis because Heller is the one that deployed it first. All Bruin did was say that the text, history, and analysis test that we articulate and set forth in Heller is not being followed by the lower courts. And therefore in Bruin, they simply spank the lower courts, the inferior courts under Article 3, and says, get it right, follow the text, history, and tradition test we set forth in Heller. We're going to lay it out in more detail in Bruin to make sure you lower courts stop screwing it up. But at the end of the day, the text, history, and tradition test is actually not the Bruin methodology. It's actually the Heller methodology 
just articulated more clearly in Bruin to make sure that lower rogue courts could not screw it up going forward because they were robustly screwing it up between the year of our Lord 2008 and 2022, a lot of it, in my view, on purpose, but set that issue aside. So let's carry on with the Heller analysis. So Heller says that the government cannot ban firearms um, if those firearms are in common use. That's pretty clear standard. We don't need to go over that again. And it's pretty clear that, that Nyserpa versus Bruin embraced Heller. Here's the two quotes from Bruin itself, by the way. Bruin itself embraces Heller. Do not trust Mark Smith. Trust what the U.S. Supreme Court says. Here is what Bruin said about Heller. These are quotations directly from SCOTUS itself. Quote, for example, we found it fairly supported by the historical tradition. Oh my God, Bruin is talking about how Heller did the historical analysis in Heller like they did in Bruin. Because remember, Heller did text history and tradition. Bruin just reaffirmed it. Here's what again, Bruin says, quote, we found it fairly supported by the historical tradition of prohibiting the carrying of dangerous and unusual weapons that the Second Amendment protects the possession and use of of weapons that are in common use at the time. Did you hear what I just said? The Second Amendment protects the possession and use of weapons that are in common use at the time. Do you think handguns that are commonly used all across the United States are in common use all across the United States today, in 2023? Heller is telling you that the Second Amendment, in which applies to California, by the way, Gavin Newsom, the Second Amendment, which applies to California, protects the possession and use of weapons that are in common use at the time all across America. That shows the test for gun bans. Bruin continues, again, reaffirming Heller because they're quoting Heller. Bruin again quotes Heller. That, was, that first quote was from Heller. Bruin quoting Heller. Now Bruin quotes Heller again. This is what it says about Heller. Quote, drawing from this historical tradition, historical tradition, see history, Drawn from this historical tradition, we explained their, meaning in Heller, we explained their, in Heller, that the Second Amendment protects only the carrying of weapons that are those in common use at that time. Bruin continues to discuss Heller and says, quote, Whatever the likelihood that handguns were considered dangerous and unusual during the colonial period, they are indisputably in common use for self-defense today, 2022. They are, in fact, the quintessential self-defense weapon. Now, that language is from Bruin, but they're quoting Heller. You see, Bruin is affirming Heller is still good law. Heller is still good law. It's the law of the land. It is what should have been applied robustly to the California handgun ban, because that's what that is. If the guns are not on the California roster, they are banned from sale. You can't possess one. There's some technical secondary se things, but those really are de minimis and don't count in the secondary markets. The reality is California has banned the purchase from retailers of firearms that are in common use in the United States today. That is not allowed under Heller, and Heller was embraced again by Bruin and reaffirmed. To sum up this part of the video, the California legislature is pretending to be acting in the name of in the name of safety. But in reality, what we're looking at is a stealth gun ban. Because if you think about it, what they're really doing is this. It's like a reverse assault weapon ban. Think about this. How do they ban assault weapons? And I'm going to draw the analogy to handguns here. The way California and these anti-gun states ban quote-unquote assault weapons which are simply semi-automatic firearms. We know this. They say that a semi-automatic rifle that has a detachable magazine and some other feature, a collapsible stock, a folding stock, uh, whatever, okay, a pistol grip, doesn't matter. The point is they say that if a semi-automatic rifle has these other features, we, that state, are banning them as so-called assault weapons, okay? That is a clear gun ban. It's subjected to the in common use test to Heller. And for all intents and purposes, they all should be struck down because semi-automatic rifles are in common use in America. It should be a no-brainer case. Now, let's take what I just said and apply it to the California handgun roster. It's the same concept, except it's in reverse. What California has done 
is they've banned ga- they have banned guns in California that are not on the roster. And the way they've done it is the reverse of how they define assault weapons and then ban assault weapons with those features. What they've said in California when it comes to the handgun roster is this. If there are handguns out there that do not have these three traits, which is the indicator that the gun is loaded, which is the, you know, the, the, the mechanism that prevents a gun from a semi-automatic pistol from being, you know, fired if the magazine is not in it. And last but not least is the micro stamping technology that doesn't commercially or realistically exist anywhere in the world. So you see what they've done? In the assault weapon case, the anti-gunners say semi-automatic rifle plus these additional features. In California, they're saying kind of the reverse, but it gets to the same outcome, that handguns that lack these three features are not allowed to be sold in California, and they're not allowed onto the roster. It's the same concept as how they ban assault weapons, except they're doing it in reverse with these handguns. And they're banning all handguns in the United States that are not on the roster. This is clearly a gun ban law that bans Californians from being able to acquire handguns that are in common use all across the United States. And keep in mind, do not come at me and say, well, they're not in common use in California. Totally, a thousand percent irrelevant. The standard for in common use by Americans for lawful purposes, is a national standard. We know this because if you look at the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Heller, they look nationwide and say that sand guns were the that handguns were the quintessential weapons pick, picked by Americans for self-defense across the country. In Caetano in 2016, the U.S. Supreme Court says that stun guns, which are not firearms, by the way, they're 2007, they're 1970 invented items, that stun guns are in common use and protected arms under the Second Amendment, even though, as Justice Alito explains in his concurrence, 200,000 people in America possess them. He, all of America, you see what I'm talking about? Not a particular state, not a particular county. And of course, last but not least, we understand the Second Amendment applies across the country. It's not unique to California or New York. It's the same law. So you look at if, if a particular arm is in common use in America. And clearly these firearms that have been improved upon with better steel or better metal or better springs or better technology, better safety devices, whatever it is, since 2013, all across America, these semi-automatic handguns that are banned from sale in California because they're not on the roster, again, these are all in common use in the United States. No doubt, 100% correct. So this is a gun ban case, and it violates the Heller in common use test clearly. There's only two additional points I want to make about this for you super legal geeks out there. The in common use test arises, as you heard, from the notion of government can potentially ban arms that are dangerous and unusual. And dangerous means like un crazily dangerous it means sort of unusually dangerous like a nuclear weapon or something but again that's not what we're fighting today what we're fighting today in modern day america in the gun space realistically we have to win these next is we need a supreme court decision that says semi-automatic rifles such as ar-15s and ak-47s are protected arms and you cannot ban them and the same goes for magazines that hold more than 10 rounds this is what we have to win on okay do not worry about captain kirk's phaser 25 or 30 or 50 years from now we'll deal with that then we have to first and foremost win the semi-automatic rifle ban cases the so-called assault weapon cases as well as the magazine cases we have to do that next and then we can worry about captain kirk's phaser if it gets invented down the road but for now laser focus pardon the pun on these two items so the in common use test is extremely good for us because there's no way they can ban the magazines with more than 10 rounds or semi-automatic rifles of any sort uh under the in common use test because they're cleared in common use and can't be banned okay so with that said i want to make an observation the reason why the in common use test exists is because it's the flip side of things that are dangerous and unusual now if you think about something that's odd here what california has said is that these handguns have been normalized. The handguns on their roster are normal and ordinary and in common use for, for, hundred, for, for, for decades, for decades, for decades, 
for, you know, since the invention of the semi-automatic pistols. And now they're saying that because these firearms, they were in common use, all of a sudden lack these three characteristics that we, the legislature of California, are now labeling essential to a firearm to ensure that the firearm is not unsafe. They're actually taking items, I know you got to think about this for a second, but they're taking handguns, they were in common use and by definition not dangerous and unusual, and California, by legislative sleight of hand, is trying to redefine these in common use items on the roster as somehow dangerous and unusual because they lack these three features. But there is no precedent that I'm aware of in American history where any kind of an arm was at any point in time in common use and or not dangerous and unusual. And then after a period of time, somehow becomes dangerous and unusual and not in common use. Do you see what I'm saying? That process of going from not dangerous and unusual and in common use as an arm in American history, and then one day we wake up and poof, that particular arm or item has somehow become dangerous and unusual and not in common use to the point where it can be banned that has never occurred in american history and yet that is exactly what california is saying in essence that these firearms that were in common use whether they're on the roster or not can now be banned because somehow they've become through legislative waving of a wand dangerous and unusual and unsafe right not allowed totally unconstitutional not permitted doesn't even make logical sense and again my criticism and it's it's just a polite criticism here of the decision by judge carney is that he did not need to do what he did he got to the right outcome which is the roster's unconstitutional but all he needed to do was to apply the in common use test because california is banning commonly owned firearms that are not being allowed into the state to be sold the in common use test should just be applied Clearly, it's a victory for the Second Amendment, but you don't need to do the plain text Bruin type methodology because, again, the Supreme Court already did it in hell -er and came up with the in common use test. So the in common use test is the product of the Supreme Court's use of text history and tradition in the Heller case. So they've already done the work for the inferior courts. They don't need to redo the work now. The lower courts simply have to apply Heller, the in common use test, to the situation and rule the California handgun roster, uh, which is effectively a gun ban, to be unconstitutional. And last but not least, I want to remind all of you what the Supreme Court in Bruin said in footnote number 11 about when there's any doubt about which way to come out. Remember, the government bears the burden here to prove their case. The government bears the burden to show the handgun roster is not in common use, that those guns that they're banning are not in common use that they are dangerous and unusual, which you can't do. I want to remember what Bruin said about foot, in footnote 11 about when in doubt, where to come out. Quote, this is Bruin, quote, to the extent there are multiple plausible interpretations of the Sir John Knight's case, we will favor the one that is more consistent with the Second Amendment's command, period, close quote. The Second Amendment's command is that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. U.S. Supreme Court, footnote 11, clear as day. California has banned handguns. They were made after the year of our Lord 2013 with their handgun roster. Clearly unconstitutional. It's a simple case. We love Judge Carney's decision, but it did not need to be that complicated. There was an easier way to get to the outcome. That strikes this down as unconstitutional. Okay, folks, hope you learned a little bit something here today. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we'll see you again soon here. The four boxes die. Order is up. Table two A.